Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Physics in 5. I'm sorry I missed last week, I was just super busy and other stuff, uh, trying to get more stuff on the website. But as you can see from this mess behind me, today we are looking at potential energy. Uh, specifically, we're going to be looking at gravitational, and then we'll come on to electric, magnetic, and eventually we'll get around to looking at chemical potential energy. Uh, but yeah, let's get going. So potential energy in physics is given its name because it arises from an object gaining energy by being moved position-wise in a potential. And a potential is uh, essentially a gradient of a force. Uh, in the case of gravitational, it's the gradient of the Earth's gravitational force as you get closer to the surface of the Earth. And as you go up away from the surface of the Earth and the gravitational force becomes less, then you give an object gravitational potential energy and when an object is released at a certain height it will release that energy in the form of kinetic energy for example a falling object so the earth as we know exerts a force of gravity and that force is inwards towards the center of mass of the earth and the reason that it's towards the center of mass of the earth is because of the relative size between the earth and all the objects on the earth and it exerts a force on every individual object. So let's take, for example, humans against the Earth. The relative masses of the Earth to, to humans is so big that the center of gravity of the two objects is actually the center of mass of the Earth. But if it was something to do with planets, for example, um, as I mentioned in an article on the website, with Jupiter and the Sun, because both masses are relatively similar in size, only one thousandth the difference um, for Jupiter, then the center of gravity is actually somewhere in between the two planets. So the Earth exerts this force, gravity, and this is Newton's gravitational equation. Uh, he spent years trying to figure this one out, and there will be, there's already been a video, a physics explained video about this, but I'll have, I'll go back and I'll, I'll make it more clear, and then I'll slot it back into the series where I think it should go. But this is just a quick look at it. The capital G here is Newton's gravitational constant, the capital M, is the bigger mass, in this case the Earth, the little m is the smaller mass, in this case a human being, and r is the distance between the center of mass of both objects, so in this case the center of the Earth and the center of mass of human, which is around about the waist area, um, give or take. It's also negative because it's a force of attraction towards the larger mass, and this creates our gradient. The force is proportional to 1 over r, and that means as the distance grows, the force becomes weaker. Now if we take a look at this side, what we've got here is an object on the surface of the Earth, an object of mass m, with gravity acting downwards. Now this is the gravitational field of the Earth. This is equal to 9.81 meters per second per second. It is an acceleration. And it always points towards the center of the Earth, no matter where on the Earth you go. In a circle, it always points to the center. And as we saw from the first board, the gravitational potential is equal to mass times the gravitational constant for the Earth times the height. Now in the first board, you may have noticed that I used this Greek symbol delta here, it looks like a triangle, and that means the change in height. And the reason we tend to write that is because we tend to consider everything on the surface of the Earth to have no potential energy, because the Earth's pull is not great enough to just suck objects through the crust of the earth, otherwise we won't be standing here. So we tend to take the surface of the earth as our zero point for potential energy. So why do we write delta? Delta means change. So if you were to put an object say on top of a, a wall or on top of a stand, you would give that object some potential energy. Now what happens if that object then falls? exactly how you would imagine. That potential energy is transformed into kinetic energy in movement, the object hits the floor and it's transformed into sound energy and heat energy. 
let's, for example, have a demonstration. So I have this pen. I've given it some potential energy. When I drop the pen, it will turn into kinetic energy. It will hit my desk and it will make a noise. Three, two, one. Easy as that. I think we've got enough time left just to cover uh, electric potential energy and then we'll get on to magnetic and chemical potential energy in the next video. The electric potential energy is to do with charges and their effect on each other. It's quite often called the Coulomb potential uh, after the scientist and it's proportional to the charge on both particles and the distance between them. Now the reason this one's not negative is because sometimes it can be a repulsive force and sometimes it can be an attractive force. And the reason it's a potential is because each charge creates its own slight electric field. And as you get closer to the particle, uh, the electric field becomes stronger. It's given by this equation, uh, which is equal to the charge on the particle 1 or, and the charge on particle 2, divided by these constants, 4 pi epsilon naught, and that's given as the... Uh, what, 4 pi is free space, epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space, and divided by r because it's proportional with 1 over the separation. So as you get further away, the energy becomes less. So that's it for this week guys, uh, like I said I'll get on to the magnetic and the chemical potential energy next time, and then we're pretty much done with the energy series and we'll be moving on to Newtonian mechanics and things like that, which is where Newton's gravitational constant will slide in quite nicely, I believe. Uh, remember, you can always go check out the website, that's where I post all the articles, the videos go up there, the Physics Friday uh, videos and podcasts go up there, and you can always follow me on Facebook at Physics Explained, I'm also on Twitter at Physics underscore Explained, and I'm on YouTube as well. And all the links are on the website, so feel free to go and check that out. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well if you enjoyed it. There's plenty more to come. There's lots to talk about in physics. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. Dropping pens on a web series. Okay. <laughs>